Today's scripture reading comes from Daniel chapter 3, verses 1, and then verses 8 through 18. Hear now the word of the Lord. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits and whose width was 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Accordingly, at this same time, certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not wish the golden statue, worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and the entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made well and good, But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, Be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, as we come before your word and as we set our lives in the front of your word, may we be open to the ways in which your scripture, your story, and your spirit are speaking to us afresh and anew today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So I wonder, can we do something that's actually, I've never done in a sermon before, uh, especially on Zoom. Can we use the chat function right now? And can you type in your favorite Disney fairy tale movie? What's your favorite Disney fairy tale? You may be able to say, I've got one. Maybe you have two. That's okay. Put them in the chat. I'd love to see what we have here. You can go animated, you can go live action, I don't know. Ashley isn't sure if Aladdin is really what she wants to put down, but she's gonna put it anyway. (laughs) Princess and the Frog, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid. Ooh, Moana. Okay, we're going old school and new school. Keep them coming. Ooh, Mulan, still sing a lot of songs from that. Up, all right. I think everyone still cries in the first seven minutes of Up. Jungle Book, oh man, this is wonderful. Keep them coming. If you've got a second one that you actually wanna throw in, feel free to do that as well. Ooh, actual fairy tale, Aladdin. But Disney movie, Hunchback, Pixar, Brave. I like how, Shannon, how you're breaking it out there. <laughs> yeah, Lion King, great one. Like a Disney story, the, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego hits all of the things we have come to want in a good narrative. We have the pride before the fall. We have faithfulness rewarded with goodness and safety. We have you reap what you sow. With most of our fairy tales, we know the basic moral arc. Whether we've seen it or not, like a Hallmark Christmas movie, we know exactly how it's going to end. I mean, happily ever after may as well be trademarked by Disney. There's something magical about knowing things are going to end well for those who act well. 
And like a good Disney movie, we can believe that if we do the right thing, then goodness will follow us, that our loved one will be healed, that the debt will be paid, that our family life will get better, that if we let it go, everything will be fine in the end. And on the other hand, the people who've wronged us, well, they're gonna get what they deserve. But what happens when it doesn't get better? When the loved one dies, when families remain broken, when justice isn't served. When our fairy tales continue to tell us the good things come to those who are good and bad things come to those who are bad, what happens when good is dealt to the bad and bad is dealt to the good? What happens when we're dealt the bad? Some of us can think that it's a punishment. We can start to even blame ourselves, starting to believe that we deserved it. That maybe because we were dealt something bad, we actually are bad. And there's nothing that we can do to change that, just like our Disney movies. This is the type of work that Dr. Angus Fletcher is studying at Ohio State. With a background in both neuroscience and literature, He's able to see how stories shape our brains and how narratives are understood and accepted in a chemical and neurological way. I mean, this is how you know we're in the 21st century. We may not have flying cars, but we have neuroscience literature professors. I mean, welcome to the future. Dr. Fletcher did a study tracking children's interest in movies and stories including fairy tales from Disney, but also the fairy tales that Disney is often based off of. Those ones that are a bit darker, the ones where everything doesn't always resolve in the end. As the children watched the fairy tales, they loved the music, it was obvious there. They loved the idea of dancing animals, they even loved talking candlesticks. And then when they got to the end, the crescendo, the final showdown where the evildoer goes down and the good one wins, things shifted. The kids actually struggled with the assumption that good always comes from good and bad always comes from bad. The kids were picking up what Disney was putting down. They can easily make the connection well, if I have bad things happening in my life and bad things happen to bad people, am I bad? Is there any hope for me? It's a word that, uh, the word that they use for this is called catastrophizing. Kids pick up on it. So do we. Disney, Hallmark, even scripture sometimes can be an escape for us to see a world as we'd like to have it. If we do good, everything will work out in the end. We'll turn out to be a princess, a miraculous healing will solve our problems. And if we stand up for our faith, we will be saved and the rotten scoundrels will get what's coming to them. But that's not the real world we live in. And actually, that's not the world that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego lived in either. We know the end of the story. But up to this point in scripture, they didn't. They were no fools. They didn't have an underdog story with the Babylonian empire where the ones on the bottom really took it to the man. Most likely the opposite was true. They probably knew the stories of people standing up to the empire and being killed off metaphorically or literally. Their commitment to their faith, their relentless loyalty to their God wasn't because they knew what would happen. It was almost in spite of what could happen. Here's what they say again. 
If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. The stakes are high. The outcome? Unknown. Their world isn't always safe. The world as we experience it doesn't always serve good to those who are good. And so when things aren't going well, when tragedy strikes, catastrophizing can take over our imaginations. Shame, self-loathing, they can creep in as we can believe that what's happening to us is because of something we've done that our sins are somehow coming out in this way, that we must be bad if something bad is happening to us. I mean, I can't tell you how many times as a kid when I got sick, I just started confessing my sins to God, thinking that that's why I got sick. Catastrophizing is real. But just like those kids, there's something in us that knows deep down inside that this isn't always the case. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes when you stand up to the empires that be, you might get squashed. Maybe this is why so many of us are drawn to Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, if ever there was a story about bad being dealt to someone good, it's the story of Jesus. And if our loyalties reside with Jesus, following his example, so much so that we are subversive to the empires that be, that we don't bow down to the empires around us of racism or homophobia or sexism or America at all costs, we want to know that without a shadow of a doubt, we will persevere like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We want to know that we'll be safe. While we can easily accept that the real world and Disney aren't alike, we still want good to come to those who are good. We want to ride out into the sunset. We want the white picket fence. We want the kiss and the happily ever after. We want the fairy tale. But as your pastor, I can't tell you that you'll be kept safe if you follow Jesus Christ. As a fellow traveler on the spiritual journey, I can't tell you that the Christian life is going to make things easy for you or for your family. I can't guarantee the tragedy won't come knocking at your door. If anything, I almost need to advise the opposite. But what the history of hundreds of thousands of Christians, from those martyred to those who died of old age, can tell us, one thing is consistent. That in following Christ wholeheartedly, that in listening to the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit inside of you, that in living out your faith in ways that are at times so loyal to Jesus that you are subversive to the empires that be, you will be more alive than you ever knew possible. You will feel the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. You will have passion and you will have purpose. You won't be watching a film of your life slowly going by, you'll be in it, aware that you don't know what will happen next, but you do know who will be with you. And you will be the person God uses to be the hands and the feet of Jesus in this world. You will touch the lives of others. You will speak up against the empires that be, and your life will make a difference in this world. That your faith and your action born out of that very faith will change the course of history forever. And this will happen over and over again. It's not just a one-time thing. It's a lifelong adventure that will be with you for all of your days. There will be times 
there will be times that people will be saved from the fires that the empire uses to squelch justice. But sometimes they're not saved. Sometimes they're killed on a cross for everyone to see as a symbol of what happens when you follow your faith and stand up against the empires that be. Sometimes it can cost you your life. But more often, it can cost you your pride or your standing with your friends or your job or, and this one may be hardest for us Americans, your comfort. But the God of Jacob, the God of Miriam, the God of Rahab, the God of Mary, the God of the desert mothers and fathers, the God of Susanna Wesley, the God of Gustavo Gutierrez, the God of Alice Walker, the God of Kingston UMC continues to be with you, going with you, giving you the strength to go on into the unknown against the powers that be. God gives you this community so that you can stand up and say that, yes, racism actually does exist. No, queer people are not second-class citizens. Yes, patriarchy is wrong and is not just helpful at times. And no, immigrants aren't illegal because no human is illegal. Wherever it is that you find this empire spreading its tentacles and asking you to bow down, be it small or large, foreign or domestic, internal or external, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from our story today, we don't know what will happen if we speak up. As we come out of exile, as we come towards our home, we're able to see that our homes, our communities, our state, our empire, well, it isn't what God has called us to. We are people of a different imagination. We are a people of a different story, a different way of living, a life that stands up against the empires that be, even if it may cost us our life. We are people of the cross because we believe that death never has the final word. How are the empires working in your life and in your world? How are you seeing the injustices of the empires that be in your community, in your workplace, your family? Hold firm, be bold, speak up, stand against, and know that the God who has called you to this point will be with you forever. And when resistance happens or tragedy strikes, your God, our God, will be with you through thick and thin. Our God will show up in the fires with you. May it be so. Amen. And now let us.